The three main risk factors for aircraft accidents are severe injury, substantial aircraft damage, and fire. But not all types of aircraft accidents are created equal. Some are intrinsically more deadly, while others can be quite survivable. So, what are these deadliest accidents? Why are they so deadly? And what's been done in aviation to reduce their risk? Those are the three key questions we'll answer in this video. Part of a three green series about plane crashes and what makes them survivable. First, we need to determine what the deadliest accidents are. IATA, the International Air Transport Association, neatly defines 13 categories in relation to aircraft accidents. We can show which ones produce the most accidents and which ones are the most fatal. However, I believe both of these graphs are flawed. On the left, it's obvious that the most common accident type is certainly not the deadliest, while outlier bias affects the graph on the right, since just one death can drastically alter the numbers. So, let us plot a graph that accounts for three factors. We'll make the y-axis the number of occurrences per year, while the x is the percentage of fatalities on board. The further up the graph, the more an accident type has occurred, while the feather right, the more likely it is to be fatal. The real number of fatalities is also important, so to do that, we'll alter the size of each dot. The bigger the area, the more deaths have occurred. Looking to the top of our chart, by far the most common accident category are excursions, when a plane incorrectly leaves a runway or taxiway, embarrassing at the least for all involved but they can be deadly, making up a total of 7% of accident fatalities. This is mostly due to the sheer fact that they're relatively common though. Excursions have one of the highest survivabilities out of any accident type, with a survival rate of 98%. Four of the next eight most common accident categories all have one thing in common, the stage of flight they occur at. Landing is one of the most common ways to damage an aircraft, there's simply a lot that goes into each one. From the intricate design of the landing gear, which needs to cope with extreme forces each time the plane touches down, to the training of the pilots. It's not only their pride which can be damaged if a landing goes wrong. A hard landing or tail strike is extremely serious and can significantly damage, sometimes even right off an aircraft. Fortunately, even though they're classified as accidents, most landing occurrences are unlikely to be fatal. The acceleration forces on the occupants are significant, but usually aren't enough to cause fatal injuries. While aircraft are specifically designed to deal with heavy loads on landing, as can happen when the gear collapses, the tail strikes, or the aircraft slams down heavily. The one landing event where we do see an uptick in fatalities is an undershoot, where an aircraft lands short of a runway, IATA doesn't release much on undersheets, as it more looks at the cause, most of the time being unstable approaches. Unusual and higher impact forces on the aircraft and the occupants probably result in a slightly elevated fatality rate. Interestingly, lying beside undersheets are off-airport landings and ditchings. These would come after some catastrophic failures, but you can see they don't result in any more people dying showing how keeping the aircraft in control all the way to the ground is key to keeping a crash survivable. Other categories with a low level of risk specifically involve damage to the aircraft, both in flight or on the ground. Most ground damage is caused by ground support equipment operations, things like passenger stairs, belt loaders, or boarding bridges. In flight damage encompasses a number of areas, one of which includes turbulence. We know that turbulence itself will basically never cause an aircraft to crash, but it can still be dangerous to passengers and crew, resulting in a slightly elevated level of risk. Though it's at the origin of our chart, basic physics tells us that a mid-air collision would just about be the worst way to crash an aeroplane, or two. They account for hardly any accidents in modern day aviation, but they did occur more in the past, with countless measures now in place to prevent another Tenerife-like tragedy from happening again. So, 10 out of the 12 categories are actually quite far to the left on our scale, 
a testament to the level of safety in modern day aviation. Some are more frequent, but they generally tend to be less fatal. The last two categories though are probably terms you've heard on this channel before, because they make up the vast majority of fatal accidents. Loss of control in flight and controlled flight into terrain. When they occur, they kill. Loss of control in flight is as self-explanatory as it gets. It occurs when pilots lose and can't recover control of an aircraft, usually resulting in high angle, high velocity crashes, where an aircraft effectively pancakes into the ground. Causation factors behind loss of control in flight vary, but pilot error is almost always involved, much of the time combined with a non-normal malfunction or a weather event. It can occur at any stage of flight, and as with any aviation accident, always involves several contributing factors coming together. Pilot training is now being developed to focus beyond just handling aircraft in normal situations, in order to reduce the chances of loss of control accidents in the future. Controlled flight into terrain much of the time also comes down to human error. It involves collision with terrain or water without any indication of loss of control. High fatality rates almost always result from the sheer speed of the collision. 89% of CFIT accidents result in fatalities. An important mitigator for this accident category is the ground proximity warning system built into modern day aircraft. It's seen a significant reduction in CFIT accidents in recent years, and the concept known as crew resource management has been developing in aviation since the 1970s. It involves the human interaction skills of pilots, since much of the time CFIT involves distraction, mismanagement, or a lack of situational awareness. When controlled flight into terrain or loss of control in flight occur, they are way more deadly than any other accident type. So this is where the focus of aviation safety is. Just as it's been on the reliability of aircraft themselves and management of air traffic in the past, if these bubbles can be burst, then aviation will be even safer than ever before. After all this talk about aircraft accidents though, have you ever wondered what your plan would be if you just so happened to be in one? The chances are extremely slim, but in the next video, we'll talk about how you can survive a plane crash. 